Hey, what's up guys, and so welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna learn how to build something that can convert units from the Imperial system over to the metric system. We're gonna do stuff like miles to kilometers, Fahrenheit to Celsius, and then pounds to kilograms. So hopefully you'll enjoy today and learn something and just have fun practicing your coding skills. Now without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. So first we're gonna open up Visual Studio 2022 here. We're gonna create a new project and we're gonna select the C Sharp console app option. Go ahead and click that. Then we're going to call it uh, whatever you want. I'm going to call mine uh, unit converter and then go ahead and click next and click create. All right, guys, now that we're in here, let's clear out the starter code that they give you. And let's first begin by importing our system um, line here. That way we can just get that out of the way. And now let's create a class and we're going to give it the exact same name as our project here. So we're going to call it unit converter. And inside of this class, we're going to have a static void main with um, string args as the parameter here. So we're gonna have our main method. And let's think about how we wanna lay out this program. So first we're gonna need something that prompts the user asking them, hey, you know, um, out of these three options, you know, the ones I gave earlier, which ones would you like to select? Um, we're gonna go ahead and validate that input to make sure they can't type in any, any kind of garbage. And then, uh, yeah, we're just gonna write a couple of functions that are going to be in charge of each um, method or sorry, each type of conversion. So let's go ahead and start in our main method here. We're first going to have a while loop and we're just gonna say while true, that way it runs infinitely. Um, and this is going to be our user validation loop. So first I'm going to go ahead and welcome in the user to our program. We're gonna say, welcome to the unit converter or something like that and just put a smiley face. Yeah, a semicolon. Now that we have that out of the way, let's start with our next line here. What we're gonna say is please select from one of the following options. Oops, spell that wrong. Just close it out with a semicolon and a closing parenthesis. And here's where we're going to actually list out our options. So we're just gonna first make um, a console right line and go ahead and let's just kind of prepare this to save ourselves some busy work. We're just gonna start this with number one. And we're gonna have three options total. So go ahead and copy and paste that. Change the number on each one. And first we're going to say, would you like to convert miles to um, kilometers like this? Next we're gonna say, would you like to convert pounds to kilograms? And then finally, and I'm hoping I'm gonna spell this right. We're gonna have Fahrenheit. So F-A-H, I believe, R-E-N-H-E-I-T to Celsius. And let me just double check that. All right, guys, it looks like I actually spelled it right, so that's awesome. Um, bonus points for me. And then let's go ahead and um, create a string. We're gonna call that string um, input. That's going to be equal to console.readline. So after that, uh, or after we list out all of our options here, we're going to just read in, um, you know, whatever the user is going to type in. And then we're going to validate that to make sure it either is equal to one, two, or three. And if it's literally anything else, then we're just going to ignore it and then prompt them again. So an easy way to validate our input, and let's go ahead and add a comment here for that. So let's say um, validate user input. We're literally just gonna have a series of if statements. And I guess you could do a switch statement if you want, but we don't really have that many cases. So I feel like NIF is probably just easier. So we're gonna say, you know, if the input's one, we're gonna do something. Then we're gonna say else if the input is equal to two. We're gonna do another thing. If it's equal to three here, we're gonna do another thing and then else. So if it's none of these, we're literally just going to do a whole lot of nothing. We're going to just say console.writeline and in these quotes here, we're gonna say um, invalid input, please try again. That way the user knows that they entered in something wrong and they have to try again. So you guys are probably wondering what we're gonna do next. Well, we, I think the easiest thing to do is to just write a function for each um, number here. And the first case that we have to handle is miles to kilometers. So let's begin by doing that. So go ahead and go down below your um, static void, or sorry, static void main method. And then we're going to create um, another void function. So we're gonna say um, static, void and then we're gonna say uh, miles to kilometers with just some parentheses here um, it's not going to take in any parameters and the first thing we need in here is we're going to go ahead and say console.writeline um, we're going to say please enter 
the number of miles with a colon and a space. And then we're going to say that our amount of miles, so double miles is equal to, and then we have to say double dot parse. And the reason for that is because our console.readline, which is going to be used to input or you know take in input from the user here, that's going to return a string. And then we need to cast that into a double. That way we can store it as the double and then use it later for our calculations. And guys, converting this is super easy. We're going to say um, double kilometers is equal to our miles that we were given. That's now a double. And that's going to be multiplied by 1.609344. Um, all these answers are from Google, so I hope that's right. Um, yeah, if you take your amount of miles and you multiply it by that number, you will get the number of kilometers that, uh, you know, are equal to your miles. Guys, now that we have our finished kilometers, why don't we just output that to the console here? So we're going to say console.writeline, open up some double quotes. We're first going to say um, zero. And this little marker here is going to be used to append a variable to this output later on. So we're first going to say, um, you know, just zero in these tags. And we're going to say miles is equal to, and then in another set of tags, we're going to put number one, and that's where we're going to put our kilometers thing. And then we're going to say space kilometers, and then a period. And then here's where we're going to go ahead and put a comma. Um, since our first variable is miles, we're going to reference that. So we're going to say miles. And then our second variable is kilometers. So we're going to reference that next. So now we have our miles to kilometers function finished. And before we go any further, why don't we just go ahead and test this to make sure we're kind of on the right path. So we're going to copy the name of our function, go up to number one here, and we're going to put it into our um, input number one. And then we're just going to run it just to see that things are you know, kind of working smoothly. So if I want to go ahead and convert miles to kilometers, I'm going to press number one. And then, um, I don't know, I ran two and a half miles. I wonder how much that is in kilometers. So I click enter. And we see that two and a half miles is equal to 4.02 kilometers. And let's go ahead and verify that against Google. All right, guys, if I go ahead and type in 2.5 for our miles, you'll notice that the output is 4.02. And if we go back here, that is the exact same number that our program gave us. So we know it's working correctly. All right, guys, it's going to be super simple from here. Um, honestly, because the next two functions are very similar to um, this first one, we're just going to go ahead and copy this two more times. And what we're going to do is just kind of rename it. Our second function, if we go up here, um, we're converting pounds to kilograms. So we're going to change the name here um, to pounds to kilograms. And then our third one, if we see, is Fahrenheit to Celsius. So we're going to say Fahrenheit to Celsius. And then we're just going to go ahead and copy the names of each one of these functions here. And we're going to paste it in two and then number three, respectively here, and then with a semicolon. And now that we have the right function calls in the right area, let's just adjust the code in here to make sure that it's working properly. So starting with function number two here, um, instead of asking them for the number of miles, we're going to say, hey, you know, what's the number of pounds that you're trying to convert? Instead of miles, we're going to say pounds. Instead of kilometers, we're going to say kilograms. And instead of pounds, we're going to go ahead and um, do this here. All right, guys, we're ready to go ahead and swap out the number here. So if we just delete this number here, we're going to um, input 0 0.4535 Now, I know it's a long decimal, but that is the exact one that we need in order to go ahead and convert pounds over to kilograms. So another thing to mention here is that um, we also need to swap out the variables in our output. So we're going to say pounds um, is this first one, and then kilograms is the second one. And instead of saying kilometers in the string, we're going to say kilograms. And instead of saying miles in the string, we're going to say pounds. All right, and that should wrap up um, this pounds to kilograms function. Now, at this point in the tutorial, if you're wondering why we're not using like a user validation loop here, um, we definitely could. I feel like it's not very um, time effective to do so. Uh, you already understand how to do it up here. And you know you can totally add it if you want on here, but I'm not going to for the sake of the video. Um, and yeah, let's just move on to the next part here. So Fahrenheit to Celsius is our next thing we need to convert. So please enter the number of you know miles. Instead of saying that, we're going to say, please enter the temperature in Fahrenheit 
and then we're going to make sure that they uh, go ahead and put that in. And instead of miles, and instead of spelling out Fahrenheit, we're just going to say F temp, just so that we know what we're talking about. Instead of kilometers, we're going to say C temp. Um, that way, you know, it's just, it's the temperature in Celsius. Let's go ahead and delete this stuff here. So this one's a little bit more tricky. First, in order to do the conversion, you need to first put in parentheses because we want to process this before anything else. We want to go ahead and put the F temp and we're going to subtract 32 from it. And then what we're going to do is multiply that by 5 divided by 9. And that's going to be the conversion that gets you from Fahrenheit over to Celsius. And now what we need to do is just swap out these variables here. So F temp for the first one, C temp for the second one. And instead of saying miles, we're going to say um, degrees Fahrenheit. And then that's equal to, you know, whatever in um, degrees Celsius. All right, guys, we are done with our program. So let's just go ahead and run it and make sure that everything's running smoothly. So let's go ahead and click the launch button here. Um, first, let's start by testing our user validation loop. So I'm gonna just enter in some you know, garbage and we're gonna make sure that it does not let us through to one of these options. So we're just gonna you know, continue to just type in whatever we want. And you notice every single time, it always says invalid input to please try again. So we know that our loop is working. Um, we already tested miles to kilometers earlier. So let's go ahead and test pounds to kilograms. So we're gonna select option number two here. Um, now it lets us in here and it says, hey, what's the number of pounds you're looking to convert? Um, I don't know, let's say I 150 pounds. If we click enter and you'll notice it says 150 pounds is equal to 68.03 kilograms. And if we go to Google, the master of knowledge and all things, we're gonna say um, pounds to kilograms. And if we put in 150 here, it says 68.03. And you notice that's the exact same number that we got with our program. So that's awesome. Uh, just to save myself some busy work, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. And I just realized I'm, I've been spelling Celsius wrong this entire tutorial, so I'm sorry. Um, Oops, but oh well, it's too late now. Let's just stick with that. So let's go to option number three now. And let's say, I don't know, it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit outside and we click enter. 70 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 21.1 repeating degrees Celsius. So if we go ahead and bring our browser back over and if we type in 70 as the degrees in Fahrenheit, we'll notice that degrees Celsius is 21.1 repeating. All right, guys, so we're done. We've proven that everything's working right, and that's awesome. Now, the only thing left to do is let's just go ahead and fix the spelling on Celsius here. So we're gonna um, go ahead and just say, you know, Celsius with an S. And anywhere we see this, um, let's just go ahead and try to fix that. So instead of this, we're gonna say S, the function name as well. Fahrenheit is equal to blah, 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 degrees Celsius with an S. And there we go. We have now spelled things right and we've proven that we can code things right as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up or comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. If you enjoy content like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more of it. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>